Good afternoon to, to everyone. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. And I hope you all are healthy and safe. As you all know, today we have taken one of the more difficult and sad decisions in our history and for some of us in our professional career. But we did it with a strong conviction that is the best decision for the good of basketball and for the good of our stakeholders. You know that we have exhausted every option, every possibility, trying to resume both Turkish Airlines EuroLeague and Seven Days EuroCup. We have every logistic and operational aspect solved, medical protocols, teams accommodations, arena equipment, TV production, competition calendar with concrete game schedule for both competitions. But it hasn't been possible. The decision should be taken today and after the assessment of the data and relevant information available, but today. This was our commitment in order to avoid to extend the effects and the problems pr produced by the pandemic to the next season. And I am referring to the players rest, team's training camps, calendar that, as you know, we have to combine with domestic leagues and also with national teams activities on summer 2021. So we have to be consistent with the pr principles that we anticipated a couple of months ago. And as I said several times, again, I have to say that our top priority is the health and safety of our players, coaches, referees, fans, staff, partners, and local communities. And the varied evolution of the pandemic in different EuroLeague and EuroCup territories does not guarantee that all teams will have the same conditions in their training camps and preparations to resume the rest of the season. Travels, quarantines, government policies regarding practices for indoor sports and other elements are different in our territories. And as a consequence of all of these facts, we have two aspects to be considered. We have to consider the risks for the player's health, including injuries. And we have to consider that this unequal preparation regarding time and conditions for all of our teams will seriously harm the integrity of the competition. To protect the integrity of the league has been also the reason we have never considered as an option to reduce the number of teams and changing significantly the competition format. This kind of approach, reducing the number of teams, will not reflect what the league is. I mean, a group of clubs that share same, same principles, same objectives, with no distinctions since the beginning of the competition until to the end. As a consequence of applying the same values of sports integrity and fairness, the 1920 Turkish Airlines EuroLeague will not have a champion, neither the 1927 days EuroCup. I want to add that I am very proud about how this difficult decision has been approved by our clubs. Like in other occasions in the past, to be united has been fundamental when the clubs have accepted our proposal. They are completely convinced that unity is the most fundamental principle of action for any organization that wants to grow and progress. And today they prove it. I want also to, to express my gratitude to the cities and regions that have shown their interest to host us for the end of the season. They have offered us maximum uh, guarantees in terms of health, safety, and operational aspects as well. And in several cases, full government support. So we appreciate all of these efforts. These candidates have put this for enormous effort and displayed a great determination to ensure that every detail was in place to hold a safe and successful end of the season. But unfortunately, as you know, it cannot be possible. So today we start working for the future. Together, clubs 
players and coaches, we will prepare the next season. I am sure we will have the complicity and support of all of them. And together, we'll come back stronger, better, to offer to our fans and to our partners what they deserve. A great and an amazing basketball experience. This is our purpose and we will start working um, starting tomorrow. So, you know that now we are at your disposal for any question or any clarification. I believe that um, what they shared with us on Saturday afternoon was uh, um, um, a list of arguments, all of them very consistent, very solid, and, and we, we had a similar vision before to this meeting. They knew, and we put this, uh, we started to make with a very clear statement, that the purpose of the meeting was to hear them and to see how they feel regarding the, uh, to resume the, the, the competition. But what they expressed were logical arguments, so nothing was new, it just was a confirmation of something that we already, already knew. Um, but definitely, I don't believe that the, this 5% has been the reason why they don't want to come back. Uh, I don't remember one out of these 37 players that gathered this meeting talking about economy. I think that the main concern was uh, about the short time of preparation. Some of the players are still at home with no possibility to go out. So some of them have no possibility to have practices, all the team together and uh, they has been for almost two month and a half lockdown and uh, at, at home so to come back and to perform at the level of the competition uh, requires it's very difficult and i have to say that m many of the players express their concern that they probably will not be able to perform at the level of the, this league deserves which means that they understand they commit and understand the responsibility they have to deliver their, the, the, the best they can and also to perform in the, in, and, and to have the, the, the best, uh, in, in the best shape possible. So it was more about, um, of course, about, about health circumstances, but many was about uh, that the competition requires a level that probably the players will not be able to deliver. But nothing about this 5%, honestly. Because as I, I tried to explain in my introduction, uh, going, going further than uh, July 26, that was our plan, will affect the following season. If we finish in August like Champions League, it means that um, that the players will need one month and a half to rest. They will need another month and a half for, for preparation for the following season, which means that we have to start the season on November at the earliest. If we start the, the, the competition in November and we have to finish on time for the Olympics, we don't have time. And if you, if you take into consideration that we have also domestic leagues, uh, then it's a different thing. So I don't know how the, the UEFA is going to finish with uh, the calendar. So it's still, I, I think it's still there are some question marks. But we definitely didn't want to, as I said, we want to have another impact in a calendar that, is, as you know very well, is already very busy, very complex, very complicated. And, 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 and to postpone the decision, the only thing that the only consequence that we'll have is, is to, to make next season um, even more difficult than the, 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 the one we have this year. We have been in permanent and we are in permanent contact with ING as together we are running the, the, the most important piece of the competition. So, so in this, in this uh, conversation, we share the same, the same concerns, the same ideas, uh, and we are trying to overcome all these problems uh, together. 
Um, of course, now it's time um, to, to assess uh, how will be the impact on this season um, regarding the, the economy um, for our clubs. Uh, depend on the impact that, that we will have after the decision that has been taken today. But uh, as a consequence of this conversation, we will have also conversation for, for, the, the, for the next season. And, and there is no doubt that, that the commitment from both sides to, to go together is uh, never, never has been under question. So um, the only thing that we will have to do is to adjust our, our projections to what we believe is realistic and, uh, and after the right assessment of the impact when we will have um, data that will allow us to do so. So, but, but there, is, um, uh, uh, there is no doubts in terms of uh, commitment from IMG side regarding the EuroLeague project. This is a little bit early to say because, first of all, we have to see the evolution of the pandemic in, in, in our territories. I don't think that today we can, say, we can say that we will not have spectators. Probably what we will see is that uh, in some countries we will have spectators from the very beginning of the season. In other countries we will have restrictions. Uh, and another probably will have also prohibition for, for fans to, to go to the to the sports event until a certain uh, time. This is what we have to, to, to understand and we have to monitorize the decisions of the governments that, as you know very well, are changing uh, every week. So in, in this moment, what we know is that uh, we have to be very active um, working with our fans uh, to keep them engaged with our competition to facilitate the clubs and, 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 and the, the way they are working with their, with their fans, with their customers. And it's exactly what we are doing. So I believe that probably we will start the leagues in some countries without, uh, with fans, without fans. But I strongly believe that, uh, that that will come to the normal in a few months. This is our view, but we have to wait and see. It's too early, as you say, to make a right assessment of, about the impact of the COVID-19 in the economy of the clubs for the next season. We started working with them last week in order to, to help them, to advise them, uh, implementing strategies to overcome some of the difficulties that they have, uh, basically on the commercial area, and more concretely in the, in the ticket sales uh, area but also in the, in the standards for our arenas in order to, to, to help and to make our fans more comfortable. Um, nobody uh, is thinking to leave the league for the, for the effects of the COVID-19, uh, as far as I know. And nobody has expressed in this, in this sense in our meeting. So uh, I don't know what you refer to, but clearly uh, to know how will be the situation next year uh, is still too early. But uh, the most important thing is that we expect that the next year we will deliver the competition as always, with the exception of this year. So we expect to come back to, to normal the sooner the better. And, and we will try to do our best in order to minimize the, the effects of the pandemic next year. But uh, honestly, nobody expressed any intention to leave the league. Um, so, and, and of course, uh, you know that there are mechanisms for the ones that want to, to leave the league and has been always the same, nothing is going to change for this. I don't remember Dimitris expressing any doubts about the transparency. He expressed concerns about the economic impact of the decision in the clubs, which is a, a, a concern that I think everybody, everybody shares. But today, all the clubs agree that this was not the topic. The topic is to understand if in the current circumstances we have guarantees to deliver the kind of competition we should do. We sh and, and clearly, 
the, the conclusion was that we are not in this, in this situation, we are not in this scenario. Regarding the economic consequence of this, it's a different, it's a different topic. So the clubs are not, do not believe that they have to, to, to subject one, one, uh, to one uh, decision to the economic impact. So they believe that the most important thing, as you said, is to guarantee the safety of our players and our teams. And this, is, this has been the main, the main element. Of course, we will have time to discuss about the economic impact and how to, to minimize this, this impact. But today, this has not been the, the, the most important topic. In fact, we, we did not discuss about the economy today. Was this, was the, he expressed, Dimitri expressed the, the, his concern about this, but uh, of course, nothing else than that. I think it's about fairness and about consistency. So I understand that teams are leading their respective competition. We also had uh, a team leading a Euroleague. But it doesn't mean that he is the one who deserved to, to, to get the trophy because the competition is not ended. So there, is st there, there are still many uh, options for other teams to become, to become champion. And this concept is not only for is only for EU league, it's for Euro Cup as well, and for all the domestic leagues as well. So what we are trying to 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 show is consistency according to the values of the competition. If we cannot finish uh, the competition, we cannot reward anyone. And as a consequence of this, I, I understand, I perfectly understand that that the clubs that that uh, wanted to to be part of the Euro league next season because it's a, it's, a, it's a legitimate aspiration and we are proud to have teams with this, with this, uh, with this wish and with this ambition. But unfortunately, uh, we are in a circumstances that uh, nobody want to be. And I think everybody have to, un have to understand uh, how um, exceptional is the situation that we have. And, and uh, accordingly, the consequences are also exceptional. And for one year, will not be promotion relegation, and will be situations or competition where we will not have champions. We 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 are we are not uh, happy and and comfortable with this, but this is the reality. So, but basically, uh, we have to 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 exp uh, express our values, and our values are around the concept of the fairness of the competition, the integrity of the competition. We cannot reward a champion. Uh, we cannot punish the uh, our, our team in the relegation if the team has not been able to, to play regularly as was at the beginning of the season. That's the main reason, and I hope everybody will understand that. Once again, there are aspects that is, is too early to, to, to give an answer at least the answer that probably people, people expect. Um, we had a, a, very, a very good conversation with our friends in Cologne when we were talking about the cancellation of this season. I, I believe that I can say that both sides want to, want to try to organize a Final Four together, and if it's possible, the next season and uh, our commitment is to do all the efforts in order to make it happen. But uh, it's something that cannot be confirmed yet. We will apply the same rules. So the, we, let's say we are back to the beginning of the season. Uh, Alba Berlin and, and Valencia Basket are two teams that um, got their um, right to play in the Euroleague based on the results in the previous season in the Euro Cup. They are subject to, a, let's say, a kind of promotion relegation system that as this year will not take place, will be postponed for one year. So we, let's see that we will start uh, from the beginning. So we will restart the competition at the beginning uh, in October and Valencia and uh, as well as Alba Berlin will know if they continue for the 21-22 in the Euro League depend on their sport results in the 2021.
still working on, on to, to know um, precisely the economic impact. Cannot deny that will be significant. Uh, because it's not only about media rights and, and Euroleague sponsor, it's also about ticketing, it's about uh, local sponsors, so there are many aspects that has to be taken into consideration and still our clubs are working with their partners in order to renegotiate the terms of their agreements and trying to minimize the impact for this season. So that's why we still need a little bit more time to work on this. But definitely, since last week, uh, there is a group of teams that are working together with the league management uh, in order to implement practices, uh, practic uh, best practices and strategies um, in different areas of their commercial activities, um, in trying to, um, let's say, not only to minimize, also trying to, to implement innovative strategies um, because it's what we will need for, for the future, to be innovative. So we already start this, this uh, conversation with the clubs. Uh, we sent to them a first report with uh, some uh, guidelines, with some advice in different um, uh, verticals of the business. And definitely we have to support them um, um, trying uh, to, let's say, to, to get to get back to where we were uh, at the beginning of the season, the sooner the better. And, and we are definitely working in this, in this uh, aspect. Of course, um, in our conversation with our partners, we have to include and we have to consider um, the, that the, the current season has not been normal, so we cannot expect them to, to, to commit uh, what, what was uh, signed and, and expected at the beginning of the season. Part of our relationship with the partners is to see how we can help each other. And as we are in trouble, uh, as they are in trouble. And, uh, and this is the, 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 the real meaning of partnership, trying to help each other and, and keep building uh, something that we started with many of our partners years ago. Uh, we will have uh, different conversations with media partners and our, com our corporate partners um, and, and we will try to see how we can compensate them uh, but at the same time trying to keep the, the part of the fee in, in order to, to, uh, to guarantee what uh, our clubs uh, are expecting to receive but also our clubs understood that, that uh, this season will be a different one regarding the incomes that they will receive from the league. So I think everybody is aware that this is a, this is a, difficult, uh, a difficult season. But you uh, mentioned the fact that this current crisis uh, or situation or problems um, can, um, can help us or can convince us that we have to speed up our, pro our, our uh, project for the future. And definitely, this is, this is one of the things that we have learned from this crisis. We believe that it's clear that the gap between the, our clubs and the, and the domestic leagues is becoming bigger and bigger, and at a certain point, it's, it's being difficult to combine uh, both. Uh, we are seeing this on a daily basis. So now we have seen the Israeli league that, that want to play in, in July, and our clubs are really in a difficult position in a club in Israel to play this league. So I think that um, um, not only because of we now believe that um, it's time to, to, to proceed with our, with our um, project, it's because um, if, we, if we see the environment of the sports product, it's absolutely necessary to present something new and our project, our expansion project was the, the last version of the Euroleague is something fresh, something new with a, a, for the first time ever our teams in, in the bigger markets and I think this is the process that we have to speed up if we want to leave this crisis stronger and uh, all the clubs are convinced about this, uh, about this principle and we are consistently working on, on this. 
a little bit early to answer this. Uh, you know that Eurocap is basically um, um, made according to the uh, domestic league rankings. We, we always keep some wheel cards. Um, and as you know, um, there are different, uh, um, the national leagues has been taking different solutions and different uh, decisions regarding the standings of the league. So this year will be particularly different, difficult to follow this principle. So some leagues, as you know, they don't have standings, uh, others uh, they crown the champion. So in the next weeks, we will go through all these, let's say, uh, um, difficulties and we will try to have the most homogeneous picture possible. Uh, the principle will be the same, uh, try, well, this will try to be the same. Uh, standings from the domestic leagues will be taken into consideration first and will cars for uh, projects that we believe uh, at certain point uh, can join uh, our competitions because of the ambition of their, of their owners or for, uh, or for the importance of the market more or less the same principles that we have been following in the last years. But to, to, to be more precise today, it's a little bit difficult without do, conducting all these investigations uh, country by country, league by league. I do not expect any change on our, on our naming rights. So we has been enjoying and a, and a very um, fruitful uh, um, relationship with Turkey in the past, uh, in the last 10 years. We don't see, uh, we don't feel anything that uh, change our view on that for the future. And uh, I know that uh, conversations about Gazprom has been, uh, has been uh, published in, in some media outlets. Honestly, I never had such a conversation, so I don't know um, uh, where this source come from, but uh, we are extremely happy with Turkish Airlines. We have no doubts that we will continue working together as we did in the last 10 years and we don't have any fear and any concern about this. Regarding the, the champion, I have to say that there was no controversy in this point, it was not even discussed. Nobody argued, nobody asked, everybody understood the reason why we believe that uh, with six uh, game days uh, still to play in the regular season with the whole playoff and the final four, uh, despite that there is a team that, as always, has to be someone who is leading the league, uh, it doesn't mean that uh, this team deserves more than others in a competition that we are very used that the, the champion of the regular season is not always the champion of, of the league. So again, I want to insist that there is, uh, there has, there hasn't been any controversy, anyone asking about this point. Everybody understood and everybody accepted. So it was not even conversation about this. Uh, regarding next year, as you correctly point out, we have to be ready if there is a, a second wave of COVID-19. Uh, we are sharing with our clubs some policies regarding arena standards uh, in case uh, this uh, happen, which I said, unfortunately. We have to be prepared for that. And our, our management is in permanent contact with the clubs, clubs in contact with the arena management in order to implement these policies and, and these uh, different let's say, instructions that we will approve at the end of the season, but these are already on, uh, on our clubs in order to have time enough to, to, to work on this with, uh, because as you know, most of the arenas are not owned by our teams, so they have to work with the owners of the arena. So it's what we are doing right now. Next season, um, we have to understand that each country will have their own uh, protocols according to the situation, the impact of the virus in this particular territory. Probably we will go from countries that are free from this virus and they don't have any kind of restriction and others that probably because they, they, they are still suffering, uh, as happened in some countries today, and uh, probably they, they will need more time to, to, to come back to normal. And of course, we will see this, uh, there is no doubt of this. 
Um, if this, let's say, uh, situation happens, uh, take into account that we have the, 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 the calendar of the season ahead, uh, we will be able to, to, to postpone games, to change dates of the game. We will have time to do it because we'll have the whole season in front of us. Of course, it will not be easy because our calendar, you know, and everybody knows it's very busy. But if we have these uh, problems, uh, we will try to we will try to to handle it with, uh, with by postponing games or changing the order of the games or using any of these uh, techniques uh, to, to in order to um, to continue the the normal uh, rhythm of the competition. Um, um, I, I think that, the, that that we cannot do more than that. Of course, we will try also to establish a calendar where the teams that uh, have difficulties with the arenas will have, uh, let's say, more uh, um, easy conditions in order to play the home games, because we also have to, we all have to understand that this will be a uh, different season. So we should introduce uh, other principles in our calendars that take into account the, the, the current impact of the COVID-19 and the future impact in the, in the earliest month of the next season. So we were trying to adjust uh, all of our policies to the new reality that we all are facing. So we are working on this and probably in the next couple of weeks we will see more details about what I am just announcing at this moment. I think it's the same argument that I use to explain why we will not have a champion. So I think uh, it's the same rationality behind this decision. So still uh, with a very significant part of the season uh, to play, um, to decide who is the best player, the best coach is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, uh, is unjustified. And I think that um, if, we, if we have to be consistent with the main decision, which is not to have a champion, I think the rest of the wars has to go uh, in, the same, in the same direction. Regarding teams going from EuroCup to champions, I always said the same thing. So we respect the clubs, the clubs' decision going to the, the, the competition they want to play. Clubs that have ambition in the future want to play in the Euroleague, they know that the destination is EuroCup. If at certain point clubs uh, give up their ambitions and they believe that their, their future should be in other type, kind of competition, we have to, to respect that. And um, I think that uh, has been uh, in the past with teams that were in uh, our league and then moved to Champions League. Uh, but we also have the other way around. So we have seen teams that uh, were team champions in the in the Champions League, and they they join our, our competition. I, I am not I'm not concerned about this. I think we have to respect everybody's decision, and they, they have to express the decision um, with uh, total freedom. And of course, I cannot ignore the fact that if. Uh, uh, if they want to play in, uh, in another competition that is not the Euro Cup, the assumption is that they don't have interest to be part of the lead of European basketball. But this is something that, that we have to respect. I think that um, has been a permanent process of monitoring the different elements that we, we had to take into account from travel conditions to quarantines to the medical protocols and has been a process of accumulation of information that, that leads us to the conclusion that we are not in a position to offer the fans a top-level competition as, uh, as we are used to. So when is relevant? If that was two days ago or four days ago, it's quite irrelevant. The fact is that we had on, on April 23rd, we announced that the decision will be taken May 25th, and it's exactly what we did. So we didn't want to postpone to, 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 to trying to, to have more information because, as I said at the beginning, this is a kind of domino effect. So if we postpone, everything has to be postponed, and then we will be uh, affecting the next season. Is something that we don't want. Um, so th this, that's why uh, th this is the way we has been working. On, on trying to find a solution and, and trying to prepare a proposal to, to our clubs. 
Uh, I, I don't have concerns about keeping the talent of our teams. I think that, uh, as you said, this season uh, before uh, um, it was suspended was the best season ever in our league. Uh, fortunately, we had many best season ever, and I am sure that next one will be again the best season ever, because I am count on the commitment of our clubs. I count with the commitment of our players. I count on on the fact that Euroleague has a prestige. Today is uh, is recognized for the highest standards. And we are lucky that many clubs and many players want to be part of this. So I, I have no concerns about our clubs will will keep the talent and I'm sure they will also improve it. I don't see one team that has lost more than other. I think this season uh, we all are losers. The Euroleague is, is one more uh, uh, organization that is losing a lot by cancelling uh, the competition. And I think that um, the same for the teams that had the, the, the aspiration to become Euroleague champ champion. So for that made a, a huge investment in their roster and their structure. And finally, they can feel some frustration because we could not, fa we, we cannot finish the season. So. Uh, I understand that the same will be the feeling from the teams that you have mentioned. But at, at the same time, I am confident that they understand the reason why we are taking this decision. Uh, they, they made a great effort to perform well and, and trying to, to, to get the, the final stage of our, our Euro Cup. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, we cannot finish the, the season. So, the, for the same reason that there is no champion in the Euro League, the, we cannot have a champion in the Euro Cup. I am very convinced that they, they will understand the reasons. It's not. Uh, I don't think we have responsibility on what happened, and uh, and I hope that they will keep them. I am sure that they will keep the ambition to to play in the future in the Euro League. Probably uh, has been, I understand their frustration, as, uh, as I believe is the same feeling we all have, frustration. But um, uh, we cannot say that there is one team that has been losing more than other. We all are, are losing uh, as a consequence of this pandemic. Of course, you know that Lithuania, it's, uh, it's extremely important for basketball in Europe. So it's our intention uh, to keep uh, representatives from the, from the country uh, as, uh, as long as they uh, fulfill the requirements. And I am sure that, that there are teams there that with, uh, and we already know that there are teams there with willingness to, to be part of uh, to Eurocam next season. And again, uh, we will welcome Bagley Tubos only if they have the ambition to stay at the elite. Uh, this is the only condition. So we respect their decision, but this is not something that someone can go back and forth every year. This is not the way it, it works. Uh, we are not going to commit long-term contracts with teams in the Euro Cup. It seems that the Champions League is doing this, is doing this also in exchange of money. Something that we never did and we will never do. So we respect the freedom of each club to take their own decision according with their plans or their project for the future. Uh, the only requirement from our side will be uh, to see a consistent uh, and a mid-long-term plan to be part of this elite. Without this, um, I, I don't think um, we need to spend time talking with, with clubs. But um, probably Litubos um, will be back uh, with this kind of project. I hope so, because it has been a, a very uh, prestigious European team and I hope in the future they will be back to the elite. That's my, that's my hope. Answering first the second question, because probably has been some misunderstanding. What I, what I refer is that we have uh, um, national teams uh, activity in next summer, not during the season. So okay, if, I don't know if we will have during the season, but you know that our calendar do not allow us to, to, to give uh, opportunity to play national teams games during our regular season calendar. But we know that at the end of the next uh, season, we will have uh, an Olympic tournament 
and we have to, to understand that our teams, our players who want to be there and we have to, to include this in, uh, in our requirements when we are preparing the calendar for the next season. That was my intention and I want to, I take advantage of your question just so to, to clarify it. Um, I, I, uh, what you mentioned referring teams that not can, cannot have their training camps in their home countries uh, can happen. In this moment, uh, again, it's, it's very difficult to foresee what will happen after summer. Uh, especially if we have a second wave of this COVID-19. But in the case that you describe, our, our recommendation and our policy will be to recommend the team to go to another market and to play games uh, in another market if it is the case. If, it, if uh, when we will start the next season, this situation is still in force in this particular country. We had, uh, of course, it's not what we want, but if it's an exception, if it's a club or it's one of two clubs that is, are suffering this particular situation, I think that we will be able to, to handle this problem without affecting the, seriously the regularity of the competition. I believe it's clear that um, we will have a new situation a new, a more challenged time uh, in the in the next couple of years as a consequence of this of this pandemic, and uh, our view is that um, some of our regulations, including the financial for play regulation, uh, has to be adapted to this new reality. Um, I think that our main concern is to have uh, a league where the clubs are sustainable where the, the PNL uh, can resist the, the, um, the impact of basically of the main concept, which is the salaries of the players. And I believe that this is, those are aspects that uh, we will work with the clubs beginning this, this, this season, this, sorry, this week. Uh, we want to have this conversation all, all, um, also with the, with the union of the players because I think they have an important uh, part of uh, responsibility on making our league sustainable as well. So uh, it will be, I think that the, the proposal will be the consequence of this open dialogue with the relevant stakeholders. And, uh, but definitely we believe that um, uh, the financial fair play regulation has to be reviewed in order to be adapted to the new situation and, and, and trying to protect the clubs uh, for the future and, and to keep them sustainable and in good economical health. Clearly, we never agreed and we will never agree with the concept that Europe can have four club competition. That's, uh, I don't think uh, someone can, can um, can believe that this is, is realistic, feasible, and, and right. Um, but um, sometimes, uh, from problems, we, we, we can take opportunities. And, uh, and probably this, this could be one, one, uh, one scenario. So we start uh, some, uh, let's say, conversations in the last month uh, with FIBA um, as a consequence of the pandemic, so both sides has been more focused on our internal problems. But before this happened, we already have some conversations and I think the atmosphere with FIBA is, is different and, uh, and probably um, not, not only for, for the pandemic, but uh, also uh, as a consequence of the pandemic, probably we will need to to, to speed up uh, the process of the conversation. It doesn't mean that we will uh, manage to, 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 um, to have less European competition. We will see, but I cannot deny that, uh, that we have a new reality and um, everybody has to make an effort to adapt the, the, the reality of our sports, of our competition, and above all of our economy to the, to the new situation. But we will see, that depends on, 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 uh, on the evolution of these conversations. But we are totally open, as always, to have conversations about this.
No, we didn't have any conversation. We never considered uh, to have more than the current number of teams. We will never had this discussion internally, and uh, neither with the clubs, uh, because as I said, um, this season it has been uh, cancelled, uh, and we have to consider that nothing has happened. So we have to start again. And uh, this is uh, incompatible with increasing the number of the Euroleague teams. Because by doing so, it's also difficult to say, based in what, in, in, in what arguments we are going to reward one team or another. So, because the, the, also the Eurocap um, will not be finished. So, we never had this conversation. And regarding the future, um, we will have at a certain point an expansion. Uh, it, but it's still uh, something that we have to work more on, on this. You know that uh, we have to see um, how this could be compatible with the domestic leagues and we have to take the right decision in each uh, particular moment. As you can imagine, we are not now in this discussion. But as I said at the answer in um, a previous question, uh, we definitely have a plan to expand the league to some markets. It doesn't necessarily mean that, that we will increase the number of teams. What I am saying is that, that we, we want to have teams in key markets for us uh, that clearly are uh, Germany, France, Italy, UK, that for us are um, uh, markets uh, that will be strategic for the, the future growth of the league. But it, that doesn't necessarily mean that we are going to increase the number, the number of the teams. Of course, so <laughs> uh, it would have been very difficult to work on a plan to resume the competition without belief that the, this is possible. And so I think that when you have an objective, when you have a goal, you have to be convinced that the goal is something that, that you, you have to achieve no matter what are the difficulties. Uh, but if the difficulties come from factors that are not in, under your control, as is the case, so then, and then you have to accept this. It's not a failure, it's just a, a, a circumstances that nobody can control. And, and of course, we, 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 could, we didn't. Um, but my feelings towards the fans are really hard because uh, you know that is our principle that everything that we are doing, we are doing for them. That the players are playing for them, coaches are coaching for them, and all the, all the things that all the clubs are doing um, make sense only if we have fans. And uh, there is no one thing that when we take a decision, we put always the fans in the center of this decision. We're always trying to see if there's something that is what they want, what they expected. And, and we feel very sorry for them because when we were enjoying this amazing season, all of a sudden we have to stop and now we have to cancel. So the only thing I can do is, is, is to, to, to express our even stronger commitment that next season will be even better. This is the, the, the best gift we can, we, can, we can give to them. So the best thing we can offer to them is to work even harder to make the next competition even more exciting. And to be sure, and I am sure that our clubs will do it and together with us. There is no um, a very uniform and consistent policy across the domestic league in Europe. So each one is taking their own decision and some of them are, uh, are going in the direction that you have mentioned. And we have concerns as we have clear idea that we cannot interfere on this decision, is the responsibility. But I think it's very obvious for, for everyone who is in the business that to increase the games in the domestic, the number of games in domestic leagues uh, not, um, in, in a very busy calendar is not going to help the players and the performance of the teams itself. I have to point out that the increase in the number of the teams not always means to increase the number of the games, because we also have to see which are the different uh, competition formats that will be approved by the, by the respective uh, domestic leagues that are, are in, this, in these discussions. But uh, clearly, uh, an increase of the domestic league games as a consequence of this pandemic um, I believe that will make every time more incompatible 
to compete in both competitions for uh, the teams that play in Europe and, co and, and at the same time playing their domestic leagues. Uh, I think uh, at the end, that, that if, if we cannot solve this problem, if we cannot uh, have a more harmonized calendar, it uh, will, will be very difficult for our teams to keep playing the domestic league. So I hope that we will not have this problem and the domestic leagues uh, will find a way that not to increase the domestic league because I understand it has been, it's not their choices sometimes, the, we all are suffering the same situation, it's not, it, has, it hasn't been their responsibility, but I believe that we has been very clear that the, 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 the competition has been cancelled with no, at all effects, so uh, with no champions, with no promotion relegations, and I think this is consistent and this is the way to avoid problems. But as I said, we cannot inf interfere with, uh, with the decisions that are taken by other leagues. And I hope that that will not lead us uh, to have a more, let's say, complicated and busy calendar. Regarding the first point, um, like many things, the decision this morning was, was historic and unfortunate. Um, and there are some details that still have to be discussed. However, as a point of principle, the incredible performances by individual players and by teams, um, we believe should be respected and should stay in, in the history books. So it is likely that uh, all of those individual team records, let's say in principle, um, would, be, would be maintained. Um, however, um, it's, it's also true that this has to be, let's say, formally ratified or, or formally finalized due to, as you uh, correctly asked, the season itself um, is cancelled. And so in terms of end of season results, um, the season will count uh, as, uh, as an uncompleted season in, in that respect. Uh, with regards to player transfer uh, timeframes, uh, again, this is something that has not been discussed in detail uh, for two primary reasons. One is that whilst it's very possible or very likely that the NBA calendar for the new season uh, will commence later in the uh, autumn or most likely in the winter, uh, there is still not a definitive decision. Uh, obviously, when there is a definitive decision, this will have an impact on the global player market uh, due to the um, relevance of, of the competition uh, across global basketball. However, um, one of the important principles of the Euroleague basketball competitions is also to respect the sporting integrity. And so therefore, like any other elite sports property, there, there will always be a deadline um, by which uh, player transfers, by which new additions and free agents can be signed, uh, whenever exactly that will be in the competition. So again, um, without wishing to avoid uh, answering your question, um, it, it, that will be discussed, let's say later in, in, in the coming weeks, uh, as and when the situation is a little bit clearer. Um, and I think realistically, we, we, we are all aware for sure that the global player market uh, this summer, this off season, will for, for several different reasons be different than any other year. Um, uh, but obviously, we're, we're, we're also optimistic and positive that um, like any other summer, uh, EuroLeague and EuroCup clubs will have some, some exciting new additions uh, for the new season that will help to add to, to the incredible product uh, that we put on the floor. The only thing I want to say is thank you. Thank you for the time that we have been together this afternoon. Thank you for your questions. Uh, we have been trying to answer um, the best we, we can. Uh, I believe that uh, we all understand uh, the difficulties that we have uh, and uh, how we feel when uh, we are taking this decision. Everybody wants to come back to play, players, coaches, clubs, everybody, of course, fans, and I, and I believe, I am sure you as well. So um, I want to, to express my gratitude uh, to all of you for helping us uh, in this difficult time, for connecting us with our fans, which is, as, as I said, uh, it's, it's important, it's, it's, it's fundamental for us. And um, I hope we will keep working together and we all will be ready for an amazing 
2021 season. So thank you, keep healthy, keep safe, and I hope we will see uh, you, we will see you all soon.